Hi, this is Zach with Warner Wound, and today I'll be taking a look at the Damasco DC-80 Chronograph. Damasco uh, took us by surprise last year when they released the DC-80 Chronograph. Um, it is a watch with a essentially a new movement uh, called the C51-1, which is based on the Vajoo 7750, but has been dramatically reworked uh, in-house by Damasco uh, to have a different functionality. I mean, as you can see just by looking at it, this does not look like your typical chronograph. And what you have here is in the style of the Lamania 5100 chronograph, the kind of famed, uh, super tough, uh, military chronograph movement um, is a central minute chrono. So as I start it, you have the active second hand, and then you'll see that there's a hand there at 12 um, or zero as the case would be, and that is a central minute counter. Um, then they went the extra mile and stripped it out of all the features. So what you have is a very, very pure, very, very stripped down chronograph counting only the minutes and doing that on the center uh, of the dial. So it's a very uncommon design. I think people who are kind of familiar with the Lamani 5100 will immediately think of the uh, Sin EZM-1, which famously is in this style as well, but this is Damasco's kind of spin on it. And it's a cool way for them to introduce this new movement, which I believe is gonna be sort of a, a flagship for the brand, if you will, something they're gonna expand on and really make a kind of a core of their uh, rugged tool watches that they're you know so famous for. Getting into the watch in general, you have here one of Damasco's ice hardened cases, and at a glance, this might look uh, the same or similar to that of some of their other chronographs, such as the DC66, which I have previously reviewed. Um, the details, however, of it are different. It's a little bit of a new design for this watch. So it's 42 millimeters in diameter. 50 millimeters log to log, 13.9 millimeters tall. That's about the same size as the previous one, but if you look close, you'll see that the lugs on this are much more rugged, they're much wider, and they've actually dropped the drilled hole on there. Uh, the loss of the drilled hole is something that I'm you know, a little bit disappointed by as I do like a drilled lug on a tool watch. Um, it's just very convenient and I think that on a really sporty rugged watch it isn't a, a distraction to the look. But here, by, uh, because they've really widened that, they got rid of it um, probably actually for the best with this design. Um, but otherwise the proportions are about the same. So it's a kind of a medium to large uh, modern chronograph. Uh, wears, uh, as you'll see on my wrist later, um, just like it sounds. It is not a small watch, it is, but it isn't uh, totally oversized either, and it's fairly well proportioned uh, for itself. The case material here is their ice hardened steel, which is extremely hard, extremely scratch resistant, uh, something the brand is known for. It's hardened all the way through, so uh, you know, it's very, you're not gonna dent it, you're not gonna scratch it unless you do something really kind of dramatic and, and violent to it, which we don't recommend. Other Damasco techs that are in this case that are part of what makes uh, the, this watch and frankly their other watches so special, uh, you have their patented crown system. So there's a lot of little things that have to do with that, but essentially the whole crown uh, system, the tubes, they're all hardened. You have a built-in uh, permanent self-lubrication cell. You have Viton gaskets, and actually the way that the crown even mounts into the case is part of it, so it's a screwed-in tube, so should something happen, they can essentially remove this uh, the crown and the tube much more easily than other brands can, and that just really goes towards you know this being very durable, being very long-lasting, and uh, as well as uh, serviceable. The crowns also harden crowns. Um, they uh, also feature Vidon gaskets and self-lubrication cells. So, you know, this also all goes towards these crazy techs that they built in that, frankly, like no other brand has, uh, let alone brands that cost, you know, many times more than this. But it's all very discreet. You wouldn't know it just looking at it. 
You will notice on this version of the DC-80 that I have here some differences from what you might uh, typically see online. This one they've called the Panda version, and um, I believe it's sort of a customized version of it. So you have the blackened crown and pushers, as well as a black edge to the bezel. That's not normal, though I do believe it is something they will be making available. Typically these would be matching with the case material as well. Then there is also a totally black version of this. Versions of this with slightly uh, different dial coloring as well. Uh, one thing that I've always loved about Damasco watches is their bezel. So they uh, do a 60-click bi-directional bezel using their own in-house ball bearing mechanism. It is one of the most substantial and satisfying feeling bezels, I think, out there. It has, like, I mean, as you can see, it, there's a nice amount of resistance to it. It's definitely not going to budge at all. Once you get it going, though, it clicks and pops right into place. Um, it's a bit of an awkward way to do it. but. It's just extremely satisfying feeling, extremely well built, uh, and it's just remarkable how well it lines up, I find. The bezel also has a ceramic insert and a Damast coating, is something they call it, which is a, another patented technology by the brand. It's a super hard coating over a couple like other material substrates to make it both flexible but extremely hard. Um, it's just the kind of thing, once again, that lends towards a, a really, really rugged, uh, durable watch. Quickly flipping it over, you'll find one of Damasco's text-heavy case backs. Um, I love uh, the way that looks. It's all in German. I'm not going to try and read it all to you, but it describes a lot of what I've kind of gone over. And if you were to remove this, you actually wouldn't see the movement. What you would see is a, another essentially back in there, and what is inside of this is a Faraday cage made out of a certain kind of anti-magnetic steel, and that wraps around the entire movement and actually includes the dial material itself. Um, and that protects the watch up to uh, 80,000 uh, you know, units of, of magnetism. So the watch is very anti-magnetic. That's the equivalent to what like a Milgauss is. Looking now at the dial of the watch, this is a new dial style uh, for the brand. And you'll see it on the DC-80 as well as the DS-30, which is their new entry-level three-hand watch. Um, and at a glance, you know, you might not even think that this is a chronograph, particularly if it's reset. You know, as I said, there's no subdials on this, so it doesn't have that kind of normal clue that it's a chronograph. And in this case, it looks a lot like the DS-30. You have large and very bold rectangular markers. Those are all loomed, they glow green at night. Between that, you have white lines. Then you have a crosshair at the dial, logo at 12, and absolutely no date on this watch. Now, a lot of Damasco watches have the date located just below the horizon at three. It's kind of like a signature design, if you will, sort of of the brand, at least I think of it, where they customize the date just to be a little bit off center. Um, it's a very cool looking uh, thing that they do, but on this watch, they just stripped it all the way. Like I said, this is really about showing off that basics of this movement, the C51-1 and the central minute counter, no distraction from that whatsoever. So what you get is just a very bold, very legible, very intense looking kind of instrument pilot's chronograph. Um, and I personally find it very attractive. You know, it's going for a very modern look, it's very aggressive, and it's kind of a unabashedly so. And then it puts the focus right on that uh, center uh, minute hand when you're running the chronograph. I will say in usage though, having run this you know, quite a bit and worn it for uh, you know, a few weeks now, um, I personally do like having at least an hour counter. So that'd be the thing that I would want to add to this. Uh, just, you know, I believe there'll be further iter iterations of this watch uh, with the movement, but for my own personal use, I found 60 minutes to not be quite enough to uh, time the things that I wanted to time, whether that's transportation or you know, what have you. Looking at the bezel real quickly, you'll notice that this is actually a countdown bezel. So that's also different from the brand. On the DC-66, for example, you'll find you'll have the option of an elapsed time bezel or a 12-hour bezel. Um, the countdown bezel here, once again, works really well with the concept of the center minute counter. So, you know, I want to count 50 minutes. I just line up 50 with the minute counter and pay attention and you know I'll, I'll just track that. So it's a really simple thing to use. That said, because it doesn't like line up, you know, everything's inverse, five is where 55 should be, et cetera. Um, it doesn't like lend it towards easier reading of the watch. An elapsed counter, which would have the inverse, you know, you, the minutes line up to where the minutes are, et cetera. And a 12 hour bezel obviously gives you uh, both the hours as well as a dual time zone function. Um, I think it's a, I like the idea of this, but I also feel like this watch would be just as successful with the other uh, two bezel uh, concepts. 
on the wrist, you'll see that the Damasco DC80 is a sizable watch, um, but it's one I got used to pretty quickly. I mean, 42 millimeters is like the top of my personal kind of comfort zone for watches. It's 43 at the bezel, but it feels more like 42, especially actually with this black bezel that could be, that could have a bit of a psychological effect on it. Um, it's tall as well, but once again, this is a modern chronograph. 14 millimeters is, you know, about what you expect on a uh, automatic chronograph. You know, I've just worn many other watches like this, including having owned the DC66 for a while, so I, I'm kind of used to the way this feels. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it exudes kind of an aggressive, tactical, you know, modern just tool watch thing going on here. It's really intense looking, it's bold. Um, it's not about like bells, bells and whistles at all. There's nothing fanciful, nothing overly decorative by any means, but it's a very strong looking watch. Um, and you know, I think it's very appealing in that. It, it definitely would go with different uh, strap styles here. You have the strap that it comes with. It's a 22 millimeter uh, Dimo del Cronismo style strap. So uh, what these kind of makes these straps really interesting on top of being just like one of the most overbuilt straps. Like if ever there was a strap to go with a watch like this, it is this strap because it's just built out like you know no other strap is. But you have this interesting notch design so that continues the flow of the case all the way down the wrist and it gets much wider here. So it's 22 millimeters of the lug, but the strap is almost 26 millimeters by the lug here. So it just, it adds to the overall boldness and sort of intensity of the look, but this would go well, I think on a more vintage style strap, certainly on a nylon mill strap or anything like that. Um, but it's not, you know, a vintage style watch at all. This is a very aggressive, modern looking watch. And as far as a chronograph goes, quite unique looking because you don't get that typical busyness from a chronograph. So if that's something that you know, and I've seen, I've heard people say that they don't like how much is going on on the dial of a chronograph with all the subdials. This, you get the functionality sans the hour counter, um, but with the addition of a central minute counter, which is something I personally uh, really, really enjoy. So the star of the DC-80 really is actually what's inside of it, which is the uh, C51-1 movement, uh, which I've spoken about already. And that's based on the Lamania 5100 concept of a central minute counter watch, but it's built off of the Valjoux 7750. So the legendary Lamania 5100, it's sometimes called, was this great movement, developed, I believe, in the 70s, was made all the way through the 90s into the early 2000s when it was, it was discontinued. Um, now I believe the rights to that are actually owned by the Swatch Group and parts of it might exist in different watches, but the movement itself doesn't exist as it used to. And uh, it's a well-regarded movement, a well-loved movement. It was featured in a lot of uh, particularly German military watches and the Tutuma NATO issue pilots watches because it's an extremely durable, tough movement that uh, is very thick. And because of the construction that it featured, the sort of pillar construction, it can go like at you know really fast like G's and not drop accuracy. It can be dropped, like it has a higher impact rating and not get messed up, just very durable. But functionally speaking, its real star was that it had a center minute counter, which if you've ever used a watch with one or chronograph with one, you'll realize just how much better it is, frankly, than looking at a 30 minute subdial. Um, not only is it 60 minutes, which is much more logical, uh, it's right there on the center axis. So, you know, what, rather than having a tiny subdial, you have the whole dial as your 60 minute register. And you can read that at a glance just so fast. Um, and it's just extremely, you know, logical way of doing it. But there's very few watches out there that do it. And historically very few watches. So currently there's a few brands that have been trying to kind of pick up the slack from uh, the 5100 being no longer available. Um, and they are namely uh, Sin, Tutima, and then uh, Haybring actually makes one as well, though they're kind of more of a spoke watch brand. And now Damasco entered the fray with this uh, movement. And it's their own build. They uh, produce all of the extra components that they need to rework the 7750 entirely in-house in their factory in Germany. And, uh, you know, it seems like they did an excellent job. So you have the base of the 7750, 27 joules, you know, 40, to 42 hour power reserve, 28,800 uh, beats per hour. It's an extremely robust movement. It's extremely reliable. And then it's been reworked to do this. And one thing I really like um, actually that they did in the re, uh, creation of this movement was made the center minute hand uh, jump. So if you ever had a Lamanti 5100, you'll notice that that hand is just crawling around the whole time. 
here on the Damasco uh, DC-80, when the uh, you know, second hand crosses the 60 second mark, you'll see that that at hand jumps why I like that is because it's even easier to read. You know, here actually, this is probably the worst moment to show it just because of where it is, but if it's on a line, you know, it's just very easy to count to. Whereas if it's between lines, then you're going to, uh, you know, potentially misread it or whatever. It's just a better way for it to work, and I'm really glad that they went with that idea. To wrap up, the DC-80 is uh, an extremely cool new offering from Damasco, and I think, you know, like I said, they really took us by surprise with this watch, and it's an extremely exciting watch for the brand to make. Um, we've obviously been fans of Damasco, you know, the entire time we've been running Warner Wound. Many of us have owned the watches. They're just a really good rugged tool watch with a very kind of value-driven pricing uh, with them as well. You know, like I said, this watch is full of technology, and then it has a customized chronograph movement on it. So, you know, what does this cost? Is it five grand? Is it 7,500? Honestly, from other brands, I wouldn't be surprised at all to hear that. But with the Damasco, it's $2,737. That's a really, really good price for what you're getting. Is it cheap? Absolutely not. But is it worth every cent? Definitely. You know, like I said, these are German-made watches. They're made almost entirely in-house by the brand in, in Regensburg, Germany. And that includes all of these movement modifications. Then you have the case tech, which like if you compare it to luxury watches that do this kind of you know, thing, like really tough watches, they won't have you know, 10% of the, man, of the amount of tech in their entire company that one of these watches has. So you know, it's all value driven and uh, just incredibly cool tool watch. So extremely excited by this, really excited to see where they go with it. Um, you know, they do make 40 millimeter chronographs as well without the bezel. I'd be really you know, interested to see this movement in one of those because that would be just even a little bit more comfortable for those of us who prefer a smaller watch. Um, and then to see as they expand on it and kind of bring out more subdials, add some more functionality, you know, really where they can go with this very cool movement. So looking forward to it.